Supporters of a former UKIP MEP who's been cleared of fiddling her expenses say she's been the victim of a witch hunt by senior party officials. Nikki Sinclair had been accused of stealing around £2,300 over a 12-month period, allegedly claiming for journeys to Brussels and Strasbourg that she never made. Ms Sinclair had a chequered history with UKIP. She was first elected in June 2009, but just six months later she left the party and became an independent MEP. Then in 2012 she set up her own party called We Demand a Referendum. Nikki Sinclair says her expenses were deliberately corrupted by her former office manager. Sarah Falkland reports. Do you think they'll clear you? Well, I've obviously got hopes I'm innocent. So I believe in British justice, so I'm, I'm innocent, so I'm hoping that they will clear me. Oh, the irony of it all. A former MEP who tried to expose corruption in the EU. Is this a responsible use of taxpayers' money, Mr Farage? Herself in court for allegedly fiddling her expenses. But barely an hour into today's hearing and the 47-year-old former UKIP MEP got what she hoped for. I would like to thank the jury for finding me unanimously not guilty. It could be the only just verdict due to the facts presented to the court. She was arrested in February of 2012 on suspicion of conspiracy to defraud the European Parliament. 27 officers raided her office and Solihull home. In June of 2014, she lost her seat in the European elections, standing with her We Demand a Referendum Now party. The following month, she was charged with money laundering and misconduct in public office. Then finally, at the end of last month, she went on trial. In the course of the two-week trial here, the jury heard evidence that Miss Sinclair claimed travel expenses for journeys to the European Parliament that she never actually made. But they also heard evidence that she didn't claim for journeys that she had legitimately made. And it heard allegations that there was a mole in her office. Her office manager, John Ison, admitted passing on information about her to senior officials in UKIP. The complaint was made by John Ison who was scheming against me and passing sensitive information behind my back to others, including Nigel Farage, in an attempt to damage me politically. When at times Eisen's attempts were failing, the court heard he resorted to, in his words, to plan B, fraud. In a statement this afternoon, Mr Ison said he did what any responsible person in the same position would and should have done. The former deputy leader of UKIP believes Miss Sinclair was stitched up, though, because she didn't like some of the party's more extreme policies. I do believe that she's got a case against the party because they did gang up on her and, if you like, she was isolated because the things she was saying about the party, particularly the group in the European Parliament was true. Vindicated, but at a price. Miss Sinclair says her political career and her life have been blighted by the case. It's certainly an intriguing case, and Sarah's with us now. Uh, Nigel Farage impl is sort of implicated in this, allegedly. What does his party office have to say, or UK party office have to well, say? Well, we've put calls in at lunchtime as soon as the story broke. We've since followed it up with emails. They've uh, emailed back to say a senior press officer is dealing with it, but as yet, we've heard nothing, so we can't. I can't tell you anything. Right, so, so what's Nikki Sinclair had to say about the prosecution itself? She's described it very clearly as a vanity case. That's how she sees it. She said, bearing in mind the relatively small amounts we're talking about here, you know, it was alleged that she fiddled something like £2,000, she says compared to what the police investigation cost, which she claims was something over a million pounds, that that was just ridiculous. OK, so what, what does she do next now? Well, this is a, a girl who, as a youngster, as a 10-year-old in the days of Margaret Thatcher, living on a council estate in South London, decided then that she wanted to be a politician. She's very much a political animal, but obviously the party that she sat up that we heard about there, we demand a referendum now, is... Well, sort of a little bit outdated because we've had the referendum. So where she goes from here, I don't know. Sarah, thank you.